Hi, welcome. Today we're going to be talking a little about the SIP registration process. I promise you're going to start with my SIP series about the SIP protocol. Uh, this is going to be the first bit of the series. We're going to be going through multiple topics, just getting a uh, deep understanding about the SIP protocol. Uh, it's a protocol that is definitely out there, no matter where you look at. If it's um, asterisk or open SIPs or it's a Cisco implementation or you have a short old PBX or Jade or free switch or so many products out there. Uh, each of them support SIP in its own way and uh, SIP is kind of becoming the de facto standard for voice over IP these days. And uh, as time goes by we see SIP being implemented more and more and uh, uh, making headways over the uh, proprietary protocols like Skinny and uh, some others. Um, if you're gonna go into the open source arena definitely SIP is one of gonna be um, one of the biggest competitors out there and you want to get familiar with the protocol itself, how to troubleshoot it, what are the tools and um, how the different uh, processes work. So we're going to be seeing it uh, running against an asterisk server but I don't expect you to know pretty much anything about asterisk. We're going to be seeing with Wireshark and uh, Deep Packet Captures the interactions of the protocol. I'd say later on I'm going to do be doing some videos with Communication Manager as well um, just to go a little about the traces and as big troubleshooting you can do on communications manager but uh, first off we're gonna start with the, the basics of the protocol today we're gonna be talking about the registration process and how should a SIP phone no matter if it's Cisco, if it's their party, if it's sub phone or whatever how it should get registered uh, for this we're gonna be working with my um, uh, Kiga sub phone right here that I have and I have a virtual machine running uh, an asterisk server on the back as well. Okay, so I have my Kiga sub phone right here. And uh, I'm going to pull up my Wireshark. Um, Wireshark needs sudo access to be able to go into the NIC card and uh, put it on Promiscuous mode to start doing a pack capture. So um, you need to run GK sudo in front of it to um, get it to start running with uh, super users access. Let me see if I can trim this down a little. S taking up too much real estate. And definitely just GTK who is not Ah, this game is such a hard time. Come on. Okay, I don't want to waste too much time on this. Last time I did a video like this, it ended up being quite a long video, so I don't want to bore you to death. Okay, so um, I'm going to create my... Uh, well, first off, I'm going to start running the capture with this uh, nick icon here. You can see all my different nicks come up. I'm just going to be using my ETH series, so I'm going to start it. Um... Wireshark for some reason on Ubuntu is running a little slow these days so just bear with me if you see a lot of uh, lack of inter interactivity or something okay so I'm running I put on a zip filter right now um, you can see that my key guy is already trying to do something against the servers so I think I'm gonna need to uh, close it out and reopen it. I had a previous set of uh, accounts there so could have be having something to do with that. Okay so um, I'm gonna create my account here so I'm gonna go over two accounts and uh, I'm gonna add another SIP account. Uh, pretty much every SIP client is gonna ask you for this series of information so no matter if it's Xlite or Ekiga or any other SIP client you have is pretty much the same sort of parameters. Uh, the name of the account most of the time is not relevant. Um, I'm gonna call this uh, X slide. About the register server here, you want to give it a domain name or IP address that is gonna take you to your server. So I'm gonna put this one and. Uh, the user and the authentication is important because the user most of the time refers to the SIP identity where the packets are coming from. You're gonna see it on the from. Uh, this is the user account that you're gonna be registered. 
the authentication authenticating user may be the same it may be different um, some clients like you to have this option to specify a different user to authenticate uh, but it's by no means necessary to have it or you can have just the same account on both that's no problem okay so I'm gonna click on OK and you can see it's, uh, it's already registered and uh, I'm gonna stop here the, the capture um, there is quite a lot of um, traffic going here about this subscribe let me see if I can can remove some of that gibberish uh, proxy mm. No, it doesn't look like I can disable presence. Okay, well, where I need to. Uh, work around this little. Okay. So, first off, we're going to talk a little how what the process should look like. So, let me just pull up uh, a little diagram that I made with Dia. Um, your authentication process or your registration process. Um, can have authentication or not um, most of the time the SIP proxy will challenge you for a password because otherwise pretty much any uh, SIP device could be registered and then start placing calls and receiving calls across the enterprise without giving out any proof that he's actually who he's uh, pretending to be so the um, SIP proxy most of the time is gonna challenge the user for a password um, in this case you can see there's um, you have your user agent client on this side and you have your user agent server on the other side and you have this set of request response um, messages going back and forth the request is basically um, any message that is generated by um, by um, user agent client and a response is always generated by the server other thing sort of as a um, rule of thumb that you can use is your request will never have numbers notice for example your register is just a register uh, your ACK is just an ACK your register with a, with a authorized header is just a register on the other hand your response is always have a specific numeric code associated like a 401, a 200, a 404 so every time that you see in a numeric value it's always a response coming back from a server uh, this 400 series are actually client errors so they're generated because the request put in by the client is missing some piece of information uh, so the proxy is declining in it and the responses within the 200 series those are, are considered to be successful um, in this case the user will register initially without any password uh, the proxy will challenge the user for a password with an error of 401 unauthorized uh, this should encourage the user to send the same registration with a specific header that we're gonna see that contains the challenge for the password uh, the response of the challenge actually and then whether it was lied or denied you see this 401 unauthorized happening again here uh, the proxy just drop the request from the user the password were not correct if you have a 200 okay the user by then is registered and then the app phone should acknowledge this 200 okay to make sure that all the messages are, are acknowledged one way or the other and both devices uh, confirm that uh, they actually received the message okay so let me go ahead and pull um, the wireshark again okay so the first message we're gonna see is uh, well let me see if I can have this packet details yeah I have packet details okay here here we go okay mm here you can see you have your um, 196 okay yeah what's happening with this Eki guy is he's doing the process twice he's doing it for this interface that I have and he's doing it for this interface that I have as well you can see they're both being sent out by Eki guy so let's just 
um, I'll do it like this and uh, MPADDR equals 2168 1.8 apply ok here we see it a little more cleanly um, you can see your your registered the un unauthorized, the registered and the 200 ok then you have these subscribes uh, these are for uh, message waiting indicator for MWI lights that's still not implemented so we're gonna not gonna concern about this um, if you go over to a flow graph uh, the display package you can actually see both directions so you can see the register going on this direction to your unauthorized being replied back you have your registered again and then the 200 K acknowledging the the subscription uh, the registration process okay so let's see what we have here on the headers uh, no this for 200 okay let's go back here to the register okay so we have these registered uh, we have the user agent client uh, we have the BIA address uh, a BIA address is is added every time a packet goes through a zip entity so in this case it should originate from this 1.8 IP address so even though you didn't have this information here at layer 3 you could still know where is the packet coming from over this BIA header um, so that's very important now about the register a packet you can see that the from header and the to header includes the username where you want to be registered to so these are the accounts that you're going to be registering to you can see your contact as well includes the name of the account what is important here is the contact uh, specifies the local IP address where you should be contacted so this is the IP address right here that the server is going to store in memory for further requests so whenever you send a request or a call to an xlight account this is going to be the IP address that the server has to use to contact back to the user so the contact header is very important does the allow you have all the different uh, zip methods that the client support the zip practice should not um, send the message that this phone will not understand like for example you can see this phone does not understand an update so the zip practice should never send an update message to this client because the client is, is not going to be able to process it um, later on you can see your expires header uh, this is specified how long the client want to be registered to is always in seconds so in this case it's asking for a 3600 uh, registration process which is almost an hour the client just proposed it it's up to the proxy either to decline it or accept it so as we're gonna see here on this unauthorized uh, well actually it's later on the unauthorized we're not gonna see that yet the unauthorized takes a lot of the messages as well um, you have your BIA, your FROM, your TO, this doesn't change, your call ID is the same uh, one thing to notice here is about these tags I get this question, well wh what about these tags that I have here these tags are sort of keys or random numbers that are generated by the endpoints so for example when I'm sending out a request on the FROM section because I'm generating the message I'm gonna add this tag which is a generic value or key that uh, me as a client I'm putting into the packet so I can later on identify it and tag it to a specific dialog to a specific call um, as you can see the two tag needs to be completed by the receiving party so it's empty right now no one has received this message so the two tag is empty the call ID is generated uh, based of uh, the from the two tag and some other parameters but this call ID should not change from the entire dialog so when you see this unauthorized, you can see the call ID is the same. Let's just move. Easy. You have this 5119B9B. Uh, you can see it's sort of the same. Uh, the from tag as well is the same. And now you have this two tag that was added by the receiving party. In this case, the asterisk server. Uh, you can see on the header, the server is generated by an asterisk PBX 1.6 and um, it's an authorized request the server is challenging the user for a password now why why I can't send the password right away 
and uh, this goes into a little uh, deep discussion that I'm not planning to go very deeply into but let me just um, pull up my diagram real quick so I can show you what happened um, let's say you could send your password right away on this register the password will be stored only or generated only based on client information so if I capture this packet with a Wireshark or any packet sniffer I can then play a replay attack I can send the same password to the zip proxy and nothing is ever gonna change in this mechanism the proxy send me an authorized challenge and he puts a random number which is called a nonce a number used once value so my re reply to that needs to take into consideration this value that the, the proxy is gonna challenge me with because this value is gonna change every time if I capture this other packet it will do it it will not do any good because next time I attempt a registration the nonce is gonna be different so mm, I will not be able to play a replay attack so this is a more secure mechanism because the, the password is never actually sent across the wire is not sent what is sent is an md5 hash out of these nuns and the password that I have stored locally so it's sort of a very secure mechanism um, about very secure I'll still have my doubts because you can have zip TLS and some other things to enforce it but at least the password are not exchanged in plain text okay so this is the header that takes care of all of that you can see the WW authenticate header um, you can see your just algorithm is an MD5 hash, MD5 hash algorithm the realm is just set up to asterisk uh, most of the time this is not going to give you a hard time or you're not going to see different realms and this number used once is what is important this value should be used by the client to generate his reply for this challenge this value will change every time so you cannot just play a replay attack on um, by capturing the packet okay in this case you can see you have an authorization header here you have a digest username this is the username that you configure on your Ekiga um, right here this authentication user it may be the same as here or it may be different reason why you like to do that let's say you want to have 10 different accounts and all of them using the same authentication user you could potentially do that you can have the same password for all is it secure not well I'll leave that up to you but definitely you can you can this user does not need to be the same as this from user they can be potentially different some clients support that some other clients don't okay you have your nonce values or you're sending the same nonce that the the proxy send out to you and you have your md5 hash response that is generated based on your password and the, this nonce value that is was exchange the rest of the parameters stay the same the from the to the contact you can see the local IP address of the client the allows and the uh, expires okay the server will send out a 200 okay uh, he's accepting the registration process um, you can see sort of the same sort of parameters the only thing that is very important here is this expires this is how long the client is going to be registered for this a particular registration the server accepted the 3600 second request uh, but it could be potentially different if the server only wanted the client to be registered for two minutes he could have uh, given 120 and then the client is forced to send registration every 120 seconds in order to keep his registration uh, active it's completely up to the server what is going to be the registration interval uh, for the zip client and uh, that's basically the process um, here you you see the client sending out a subscribe for a message summary event this is for MWI lights so you can be notified when you receive a voicemail but in this case the uh, the voicemail feature is not yet configured in asterisk so um, you receive an unauthorized unauthorized and then 404 not found no mailbox available and um, he sends out the publish to say that he is currently online because Ekiga supports presence as well and he receives a 501 method not implemented from Asterix that uh, presence is currently not implemented um, that'll be what uh, uh, a good registration process looks like let's see what, what a bad registration process will look like okay let me put a, a wrong password here okay okay 
uh, you can see that you send a register uh, your challenge for your password as uh, you normally would you send out the register um, you include your authorization but definitely the 75 ha bash hash is not what the server is expecting so you're gonna get a 403 forbidden uh, the server may send as well 405 unauthorized again and the client should not continue to send registration for a specific amount of time but the forbidding is as well very common uh, with a bot authorization mechanism so whenever you see a flow that is acting like this definitely the password that the zip client is extending to the zip server is not correct um, now what about unregistration okay let me let me see if I can get this account registered again okay so it's registered okay let's see what happens when you unregister uh, you don't expect to see anything new or anything different don't expect to see an unregistered message there's no such thing in SIP what you're gonna see is a registered message that contains an expire headed cert to zero so that means that your client is expiring his registration right now he's going unregistered and he should not be considered as active any longer by the SIP server now reason clients would like to do this is for example when you have a SIP client running on your laptop and then you close your laptop and you want to go home perhaps you have multiple SIP phones configured to to trace you down you want to make sure that the moment you're not on the client then the client is no longer going to be considered valid and then the system make um, bad decision about how to reach you so the client is actually actively expiring his registration now for this one you will receive a 401 unauthorized you will be challenged because otherwise anyone could be expiring you so you need to prove to the SIP server that you are who you say you are in order to end up the registration otherwise it will be so easy to send out an attack expiring everybody's registration and then nobody being able to place calls or receive calls because everybody is expired um, you're gonna send the register as well with your um, authorization header on it but as well the expired is set to zero and the server will send you a 200 okay with the expired set to zero so the re the registration is expired you'll no longer be considered as a live entity um, to what the SIP server uh, matters this process is going to be the same process for call manager for asterisk for pretty much any sort of a SIP entity so you're having problems during the initial registration uh, those are the set of packages and exchanges you wanna uh, take into consideration one thing that could happen is um, seeing a problem sort of like this uh, when you have only one way traffic let me let me log into my asterisk and do something like this Okay. Uh, Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna do a process extended format. I'm gonna do a grab for asterisk. Okay, I'm gonna do a kill minus nine, so I'm gonna command the kernel to kill my asterisk server. Something that I would normally not do. Uh, yeah, of course, I need to put my pseudo cape first okay kill minus nine twelve oh two okay so if I do an add stat right now a l n for port fifty sixty you can see nobody's listening anymore so what is gonna happen in a scenario like this when your zip server is crash or the zip server is listening on an on a non regular port is um you're gonna see something like this you're gonna see your client sending a registered, 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 registered and he may get something back from the network some ICMP and reachables because the port isn't reachable he may just get nothing so when you go here and you and you run um, a flow graph you can see that traffic is only one direction all your racers are going out but they're never being acknowledged you never receive uh, 200 okay or a 401 unauthorized back from the server so those cases 
the server is down, there's a firewall blocking, it's not listening on the right port, it's not listening on UDP or it's not listening on TCP, but definitely there's something wrong with the the transport layer uh, up to the proxy. You should be getting any message from the proxy. If you get any sort of message, that is a good initial sign, but it definitely needs to follow through the series of steps that we have um, mentioned so far. Uh, just to do a quick recap, let me pull up the uh, the diagram again. Uh, this is what a, a good authorization should look like. Send out your registry, your challenge for the password. This includes the nonce to prevent from replay attacks. You send your registry again and your acknowledge back. Okay, I hope you are uh, enjoying the video and uh, I'll see you soon in a, a series about invites and calls, transfers, uh, holds, forwards, uh, all sort of uh, crazy scenarios. So, see you soon.